Hello and welcome. All right, so this is part number five of chapter number two, the experimental techniques. In part number four, we have started discussing the different methods of uh, purification. Um, and we discussed in the previous video how to purify a mixture of two solids and how to obtain them separately. In this video, we'll be talking about uh, purifying different sol solutions. If you have an aqueous solution that is a uh, solvent uh, plus a soluble uh, solute, um, to obtain the solvent, you will undergo a process known as simple distillation. And to obtain the soluble solid, we have uh, the soluble solute. Uh, we already discussed this in part number four. If you want to obtain it in powder form, powder form, you obtain it by evaporation to dryness. And if you want it crystals, in form of crystals, uh, you will undergo uh, the process known as crystallization. Okay? What if you have a solution of miscible liquids, that is, liquids that are mixed thoroughly? You have to undergo a process known as fractional distillation in order to obtain each uh, liquid separately. Okay, so let's get started first by aqueous solution, an aqueous solution. So if you have a soluble solid in water, that's an aqueous solution. To obtain the solute, that is the soluble solid, as we said, if you want it in powder form, it is by evaporation to dryness. If you want it in crystalline form, you evaporate it to crystallization point using water bath. Again, uh, determining the crystallization point has been discussed in part number four in the previous video. Now, the new thing, how to obtain the solvent, that is the water you have to undergo a process known as simple distillation. Simple distillation is basically vaporization followed by condensation. What is vaporization? It is changing liquid to gas and condensation is basically changing gas to liquid. We already uh, discussed vaporization and condensation and sublimation and melting um, uh, uh, and all of this um, in chapter number one, that is states of matter. Okay, so let's see the apparatus of distillation. That's the apparatus. You have to um, be able to illustrate simple distillation on the exam. So we here have a thermometer and we have a distilling uh, flask in which the solution will be placed, our aqueous solution will be placed. Um, and the distilling flask is placed on a tripod with a gauze and heated. Of course, anti-pumping granules are uh, put for smooth boiling. And so um, vaporization will take place. And so the vapors of water will be collected here. And with the help of the condenser, they will be condensed and changed to a liquid. And this liquid will be um, um, received here um, in the conical flask. And this is known as the distillate, what is collected um, in the conical flask. Now, simple distillation can be used to obtain, for example, um, pure water from, uh, sorry about that, pure water from seawater or any aqueous solution. Basically, if you want to obtain the solvent of any aqueous solution, you um, undergo a simple distillation. Again, simple distillation. Uh, um, distillation, I mean, uh, means vaporization followed by condensation. Vaporization followed by condensation. Okay, now uh, there are a few precautions to put in mind. The cold water inlet should be the lower inlet. Why is that? Because if the cold water was the upper inlet, then the water will flow fast. And in this case, the cold water won't have enough contact with the vapors here to uh, condense them to liquids. Okay, so it needs to be the lower one so that it has more time and more contact with the vapors to condense them. The next thing, the next precaution is that the receiver of the distillate should be a conical flask. This is known as a conical flask. The one which is shaped like this is known as 
Sorry about that. It looks... <laughs> okay. We're gonna draw it again. This is known as a conical flask. Why? So that it can condense most of the vapors and reduce the evaporation of the distillate. If it was a beaker, you know, uh, maybe th there is more room for evaporation, but if it was a conical flask, it's a smaller, like it has this narrow neck, and so it reduces um, the uh, evaporation of the distillate. Now, we're done with um, how to um, obtain the uh, solvent in an aqueous solution. Now let's go to uh, how to purify uh, solu um, uh, solutions of miscible liquids and how to obtain each liquid separately. Okay, what is meant by miscible liquid? Again, it is liquids that are mixed thoroughly. So fractional distillation, which is a method which is used to separate miscible liquids, um, separates according to boiling points. So the least boiling point, the fraction, the liquid, the liquid, which has the least boiling point will distill first. It will be collected first as a distillate in the conical flask. Okay, this is a second, um, we will discuss this later. Okay, now here's the apparatus. We have a thermometer and we have um, a distilling flask. Um, okay, so the example that we will be discussing is how to separate wine. Wine is a, uh, is a mixture of methanol, which has a boiling point of 65 degrees Celsius, ethanol, uh, which has a boiling point of 78 degrees Celsius, water, which has a boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius. So you're going to place the wine in the distilling flask, okay, and then place it on a tripod uh, and a gauze, and place anti-pumping granules for uh, smooth boiling, as we said, with the simple distillation. Okay, and here there, there is the fractionating column. This is the, the main feature of fractional distillation. There is this fractionating column. And of course, there is the condenser and the cold water um, inlet is the lower inlet and the hot water comes out from here and here the distillate. Of course, since methanol has the least boiling point, it will distill first. What does that mean? It means that it needed the least energy to be in the gaseous state. It was the first one to get vaporized here and turn into gaseous state. It needs the least energy. Okay, um, here there is a tip. To have better results, 10 degrees Celsius difference is preferable. What does that mean? So, if you have a mixture of liquids, okay, that you're going to separate using fractional distillation. What if their boiling points was 65 degrees Celsius and 70 degrees Celsius and then 72 degrees Celsius? After you collect the one at 65 degrees Celsius, let's say methanol, you have to remove the conical flask and place another conical flask to collect the liquid, which is 70 degrees Celsius. And so it could you could get flustered and not um, and not you know. Um, and the, the methanol uh, might not be uh, fully methanol. The other liquids can, a few droplets of the other liquids can also be in that conical flask. So it's always better to have a 10 degrees Celsius difference. Okay, so we are done with this video. Uh, we discussed um, fractional distillation and simple distillation. Um, if you have any questions, uh, kindly leave them in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.